Hello, and welcome back to The Offer. This is an entirely improvised podcast, which I make along with my co-host, Cesar. How you doing, Cesar? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Paul. And good evening, children. <laughs> the children, though all the children who are listening to our podcast, they're the most yes. important. Yes. We have, a, <laughs> we have an overwhelming minority of, of minors. Overwhelming minority. Podcast. Probably... Th- th- their number is probably really close to uh, zero. But they're an important zero. You know, like, they're in our hearts, and we keep them in our hearts and minds in some yes. balance thereof. Well, I'm talking to your everyone's inner child, not actual child. Inner child within you that is listening to this yes. improv podcast. You are here for joy, and we have joy in people. In fact, to satisfy that inner child, what we have today is a genre. How exciting. Yes. That genre Quite. is, drum roll, the, uh, space western. The space western. The classic the classic space western, of course, that you shall all know. And uh, we can't wait to make that for you. So, uh, without any further ado, unless Caesar, do you have any do to add? Um, happy Kwanzaa. Yes. You're still working on that catchphrase, huh? Uh, it's uh, a work in progress. Uh, well, I, I gotta say, you're, you're making some progress. Here we go! This is The Offer. look at that opening song it just sort of goes on forever sort of <laughs> it's it does i i don't know I, I really like it okay that's good at least one person who listens to the podcast likes it i'll put that down i'll put that in my stash of good well, things I, that people i thought you liked about. it too what are you talking about well of course i liked it i picked it but i don't you know it's that thing you're trapped in your own head thinking like i don't know if this thing that i like is good for this i don't know ah! isn't that a common occurrence with you yes i mean like i would say being trapped in my head all the time that's like it's it's yeah. kind of more than common, but like worrying. I like this thing. Are other people telling me that they that they like it because they know that I like it? So they're just trying to appease me, and then I'm just living in sort of bubble of a vacuous void where I, everyone says what they think I want to hear because they don't really care. <laughs> yeah. How how did you survive this long? Uh, with a lot of booze. <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps that's the boost. <laughs> perhaps that's what's keeping me alive. So I wanted to tell you about something that happened in my life, Caesar. That is All that right. crazy. So we recently, uh, my family had one dog. I got the dog mm-hmm. in like February, right? And we got a second dog. It's an adopted dog. Square. Thing. Dog square. Now here's I here's see. here's what is here's it? Is it a puppy? No, she's like one. It's an adoption shelter thing. So, like, there's some sort of place where people are not nice to dogs. It's like a kill shelter. They find strays. Oh. And, like, and then this place works to be like, hey, send them to us. We'll find them a home. Right? Okay. So, we got this dog. She's like a border collie for everyone who's imagining a dog. Border collie. Right? Uh, a lassie. Like, it's yeah, a lassie. Like, like a short-haired one in black. So, there's, like, there's a dirty already, lassie. There's a there's thing. A <laughs> dirty lassie. So, there's the, anyway, we, get her, we, get, we, we adopt her. We spend a long time with the other dog at the shelter being like, are they going to get along? We don't know. Let's find out. We're just like letting them pal mm-hmm. around. We're like, okay. People, we were sort of like, we'll find out. We'll take, we'll take her home. We get home, walk in the door. And I'm like, okay, everybody, I'm going to take the dog off the leash. Right. I'm going to just do, I'm gonna do that right now. And everyone's like, okay, dog's off the leash in the house, showing her the, here's where your water is or whatever. Dad goes out the front door. Cause he's got something he has to do. And the dog sees mm-hmm. that and like walks up to the front door. It's nearly shut. Right. Like, cause it's on one of those closing arms. And mm-hmm. she just, like, puts her nose on it and, like, pushes. And everyone, like, turns and, like, as if in slow motion is like, oh, no. And she's out. This brand new dog we have had for a total of five minutes inside the house. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> and, like, so we go outside. And we're, and she's, like, staying nearby. And we're like, okay, come here. And she's not, like, responding to her name very much. Like, come here. Come here. And then she just, like, keeps getting further away from us. And we're trying to follow. I'm still, like, in sandals. And I'm, like, then she starts racing. And I'm, like, oh, no. I'm running. And it is, at this point, I have not mentioned the time. It is now sunset. Dusk. Like, light is fading fast. And what color did I say she was? Black. And she just, huh. di- she just disappears into the night. Like, hard lost. And we... Oh, well. Back to the kill shelter. <laughs> it was It was... 
like nightmare. Like she didn't even have like our address on a collar yet. Like nothing. Just she's she was chipped, so it wasn't. But anyway, so we spend the next like two three hours wandering in circles and what's happening is that neighbors get more and more involved they're like i saw a dog go that way and I'm like okay i'll go that way and they're like i'm gonna get in my car and i'm like uh, okay i don't know who you are okay and like so then we have this roving network of people who are like we saw her by the beer distributor and we're like oh okay I mean, did you tell them you lost a dog not a child right? yeah, yeah 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 they knew they knew it was a dog but they were like offering to help look for this dog Mm-hmm. And and so we'd like we saw her that way and like this cloud of people were like so my mom called the people from the shelter who were like oh yeah she did that at her last foster home too and we're like you, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you didn't think to mention <laughs> and I I like that idea okay which part I want to take it? that offer okay how I want to take that offer omitting. A very important detail. <laughs> Omitting a very important detail. Here we go. It was a sunny evening in the town of Dark Star, in located in a small planet in the furthest corner of. Orion. Uh, come on, I just need a little bit more fuel. Ah, oh, God. <sighs> What's up, city boy? Having trouble pumping up the fuel? Well, the, uh, the they they won't take my they won't take my credits. They're only taking this. Uh, <laughs> What is it? You got credits. <laughs> yeah, I got credits. I just you're came in from dark. You're in Dark Star, kid. Ah, uh, well, we d- we trading black matter here. Well, how do I get? Where is there a an exchange place where I can get credits? I can turn credits into black matter. <laughs> exchange place. Hey, Jebediah, get over here. Take a look <laughs> at this buffoon. What? Get, he's got credits, doesn't he? I can tell he's from his shoes. He's got credits. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, and then wait, wait, wait a second. He's looking for an exchange, please. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just Why don't we just flip him a coin? Huh? Flip him a coin, a black man. <laughs> a credit coin. <laughs> uh, I'm not really uh, liking this. You're, I, I don't think Dark Star is a very nice place. Look, so, kid, we're simple folk, salt of the earth. As they used to say. If there was any salt left, am I right? (laughs) (laughs) Look, kid. If you want to get... Yeah? If you want to get black matter, you can look for work at the town. I I believe the sheriff's looking for a sucker to do his job for him. Well, fine. I'll go... I'll go work. Where should I park... Park my ship? Ship. A fuelless ship? Who's gonna steal that shit? Your ship's also just a piece of. It's just. Em- oh god! What did you did you drive that through a proton cluster? Looks like it's well, been that's stripped. True. I forgot to mention that very important detail. Uh, it looks like it's pure rust, and we don't take that lightly here. Well, I. I- I just finished an aquatic job. Anyway, it doesn't it doesn't matter. This is this is my beauty. This is this is Darla. You d- just don't say a bad word about Darla. Okay. Darla. That's a fat chick's name. What's your name again? Gubadaya. Gubadaya? It's Gubadaya and Jebadaya? Yeah, we're brothers. You so just to get that straight, your parents named you Gubadaya and then named your younger brother Jebediah. You got a problem with that, city boy? He says while pointing his proton gun at him. I wouldn't do that if I were you. What are you gonna do? Hey, Jebediah. Yeah? Pull up your proton shotgun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I did warn you, right? I that has been that has been made clear. You've been warned, yes? What are you, a lawyer, do? Get the head out of here. At that second, the young man snaps his fingers. Darla's cannons pivot. 
and blow them both back ten paces. <laughs> it's a warning shot. You can back off now. I have disposed of the thread, star kid. Darla, you are you just I, you didn't have to dispose of them, but okay, all right, oh well, okay. Let's. let's I apologize for use of extreme force. Darla, this is the third time this this month that you've done this. I, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look into your your deep programming structures. God, you're not supposed to kill people, Darla. All right. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna park you over here. <sighs> he gets into the ship, parks it in the back, the fueling station. Gets out. We cut to the sheriff's office. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Mr. Kidd. I am here because uh, I hear that there is a, a job opportunity. Um, something that I could do the for sh- you? The sheriff's hun- hunching over a desk looking at a, a pile of papers. He doesn't pay attention to the stranger that just walked into his office. Uh, it has to be somewhere here. It's got to be somewhere here. Star Kid <sighs> sees a, a small shining key that has fallen on the side of the desks. The desk lifts it up. Excuse me, sir, are you, look, are you looking for this? Oh, there it is. Give it to me. Yeah, sure. Yes. Chairs walks up to his desk and opens uh, a drawer, opens it, and pulls out a holographic wanted sign. <laughs> sign. Oh, is that for is that for the the Bibbity the Bibbity Brothers? Yes, That's for the Bibbity Brothers. Bibbity Brothers. I came I came to Dark Star looking for them. There's a bounty on their head, I hear. Yeah, ten thousand dark matters. Well. That should Might you be one of those bunny hunters? I haven't always been. I am now, I guess. Yeah. You do look. You don't really look like a bunny hunter. You look like a lawyer to me. Well, times are hard, and the law it isn't what it used to be. There's no law anymore. It was outlawed. Yeah, and I was in the public defense. I was a public defender, and do you know man. how hard it is to be a sheriff where there's no law? I would imagine that does put you sort of fundamentally at odds with the structure of society. It does. Yeah. Yeah. All I can so, do now is to offer, you know, offer bounties to idiots like you. So who do you, sorry, who do you work for if there's no law? Just a quick. Uh, the people of Dark Star. They all sort of chip in or is there, is there a. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the mining company. Ah, that's what it is. Well, where do you think they, they get all the dark matter from? Axitron mining is the reason I went out of business in my firm. You work hey, for them? I work for the town. They are happen to be the people signing my checks. Mm. Well, I don't really have a choice. I need to find this guy. Any any word on where he was last seen? Anything he's been He was to? last seen in top of Mount... Dragonfall, not too far from here, few few hours by horse. By horse? Man. Yes, by Dark horse. Dark stars. All right, well, thanks, Sheriff. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm Mr. Kid. I'm Star Kid. Your name is Star Kid. Well, it's a, it's a, you know, I don't use my real name. I was in the law. I can't, I can't mix up the two, so. That makes sense. Sheriff Brannigan. Nice to Jared meet Brannigan, you. Jared Brannigan, nice to meet you. Well, I'll uh, I'll be going after this guy, um, so i uh, just ask you to Guys, stay out of my way. The, re- the reward is for both of them. Oh, no, there's there's the Bibbidi Brothers. All right, I was hoping there was just yeah, one. Yeah, both right. Bibbidi Brothers. Why do you think we're offering this much black matter? If it, wasn't, if it, if it was an easy job, we would offer just 5,000 black matters. Black Matter just doesn't mean anything to me yet, as far as its enumeration, but now that I know, I will go, whoa, that's a lot of Black Matters. Wow. Don't play smart with me, kid. I'm just, that's just what I do. My name's Starkit. What do you expect? Yeah, and this is what I do. I talk to morons trying to make an easy buck like you every single day, and only half of them come back, and only two of them have ever returned with a fucking bounty. So don't play cocky. The sheriff pulls out a box file from under the desk and drops it on the top. 
dead bodies. I mean, not they're not real, but these are their names. The Bivity Brothers did all these? Half. <sighs> well, I hope I'm smarter than all those in there. You don't need to be smarter. You just gotta be faster. We cut to the top of the mountain, the mountain that was called... Mount Dragonfall. Mount Dragonfall. In the distance, there is the sound of heavy machinery, of mining, and around a little fire sits one of the Bippity Brothers. <laughs> the other one lays in a cot to the side. Ah! Uh, Sam! Ah! Uh, uh, y yes, Charles? Uh, Sam, I... Ah, uh, this is getting real bad. Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen if we don't. Ah, uh, get... you forgot to take your health pill again, didn't you? Uh, talk, <sighs> Sam. Sam, I'm talking about the bullet wound in my side. The health pill will only go so far. <sighs> well, <sighs> do I always have to take care of you like this, Charles? Just turn around. Okay. Let me get my first aid kit, and I'll fix you up. Thanks. Uh, it's getting real close. Those last wah wahoos who were coming after us. Uh, Sam were, picks up a laser thing and goes... <laughs> which uh, immediately cleans and cauterizes the, the wound. Ah, uh, thanks. Whew. Have Do you, you think they're up to us? Do you think they suspect what we're doing here? I don't think anybody knows yet. I think they're just still following that bounty from way back in the center of the Orion Nebula. Ugh. Well, yes, we've been running away from the center of the, of the nebula for the past ten pars parsitrons. Yeah, the parsitrons. After a while, they just start blurring into each other, don't they? The yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't <sighs> even... I don't even know how many people we had to kill to, to keep them away from our, our um, loot. I don't really want to. I don't really want to say it. It makes me very uncomfortable. Have you, have you fed them today? Ah. <sighs> Charles stands up I and did. walks to the corner, and pulls back a blanket on top of a crate in which scurry some creatures. It looks like they could be fed again. Here, throw me the, throw me the, throw me the pellets. He throws a bag of pellets. We just got to get these little guys. You know, we just got to get them out of here. They're worth, they're worth a lot. But look at how cute they are. I know they are. They're the last, the last puppies in the universe. Yeah. Everyone thought they were extinct. Yeah. Not anymore. As long as we can keep them alive. I don't know. <coughs> I don't know, Charles. It's I. I feel the heat. It's getting too close. You could have died back there. It was. It was a lot closer than I thought. But maybe, maybe if we can just get to the abandoned mine shaft, maybe we can set up there. We'll be safe. Charles, we listen to yourself. Did you hear what that last bounty hunter said? Ten thousand black matters. Do you know how much that is? We're going to have the whole time be after us in no time. They hear the sound of horse footfalls clomping. They hear the clattering of horses coming over the hill. Ah, okay. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back, Sam. Ah. Poking his head over the hill, they see just a miner's cap. Um, I'm looking for the foreman. Is the foreman here? Foreman. Uh, yes, I am a f f the foreman of the m the mine. Yes. Oh, that's good. Hey, I I need you to sign this uh these paperwork's. Would you Would you take a look at this the paperwork's? Of course I would. Sam pulls up his gun and shoots him in the head. <laughs> it bounces off of the helmet that the man is wearing. <sighs> okay. That was nice and all. Hi. 
The man gets back up off the ground. It's Mr. Kid. He's got a gun trained on each of the brothers. All right. I was hoping to just get a lay of the land, but that was mean. That was mean. That was mean. One of the Bippity brothers. We're going to have a chat. When we return to Star Puppies, Star Puppies, the adventures of Kid and the Bippity Brothers, we will discover, will Star Kid get Darla running again? Will the puppies find their safety in the bottom of a mine shaft, or who knows? Will they find freedom and riches? which everyone is always looking for in Dark Star. Right after this word from our very real sponsors. Picnics. I love picnics. I'm just going to throw this blanket out here. Do you have a license to do that, sir? A license? I just have a blanket and a picnic basket. You may think that doing a picnic is completely harmless, but this man right here is committing an illegal act. No, don't arrest me! Ah! Oh no! Ah! Please! So remember, next time you're trying to do a picnic in public property, remember this. The government owns everything. The government owns everything, and if you want to have a picnic, you must pay us. Sponsored by the government. The government. Welcome back to Star Puppies, The Adventures of Star Kid and the Bippity Brothers. When we last left, Star Kid had found and had at gunpoint the Bippity Brothers. Let's find out what happens in Act Two. Here we go. Ten years have passed. The town of Dark Star is a sprawling metropolis thanks to all the dark matter they have been mining. Sheriff Brannigan is sitting in his office, his newly built office, where he works with a whole police force. A dark figure walks through the door. <clears throat> Sheriff Brannigan. Now who the hell are you? Still working this beat, it seems, huh? Huh. Oh, I remember you. You're the loser I sent to look for the BBD brothers. Uh, how long ago was that? Many, many parsets. Parsets. Met, yes. Parsets. They do blend in together after a while. They do. Yeah. You wow. run away. Well, so I thought you ran away like a coward. Never heard from you again. Well, sometimes, sometimes it's not quite as simple as... The law would make it seem. Something... Like you wouldn't know anything about that. I would, actually. Look, Mr. Kid was the name. Kid, yeah. Still going Things have kid. changed around here. Walk with me. Uh, sheriff brings uh, Star Kid to look through the window. He opens the blinds. This is a huge and window. And they can see wow, the sprawling doing... city. All they really him. well. Well, we are doing very well. The town, you know. Mining has brought us a lot of... Mm, how can I say? A very good reputation and good fortune. There's no way all this comes from mining money. Oh. Please, have a seat. Star Kid sits... Uh, Sheriff Brandingan offers him a, a glass of 
whiskey. Please, have a drink. This one's on me. I haven't had a drink for a lot of parsets. They do blend in together. All right. Cheers. Cheers. What you learned that, li- the, that night at top of Mount uh, Dragonfall. Dragonfall. Remember it? Yeah. Clear as, clear as if it were yesterday. Yeah. You better forget about it. That's why I'm here, actually. I can't forget about it. I've been flying for years, going job after job, and I can't get it out of my head. Major, Major Bibbity would really like you to forget what you learned that night. It isn't right. You know it. I can see it. I can see it in that little shift in your eyes. Where is the sheriff? The one who stood up for this town when nobody else would. Where is that person? He lives in a mansion now. Sh- no, shut the fuck up. Starkid stands up. Do you up. think you know anything about the struggle these people have been going through? What do you think is going to happen to them if they learned what's fueling their prosperity? Whatever happens is what should happen. Because you, you have a right to protect these people, even from things they don't know. And you have the right to remain silent, sir. You're under arrest. You can throw me in jail, but I won't stay there long. Oh, you're not going to jail. You're going to a very special place. Where? Oh, you will know. Uh, the sheriff pulls up a stun gun and shoots him in the chest. Ah! You treacherous bastard! It, it is in treason if I warned you. Now we cut to the major Bibbity's, uh special dungeon. <sighs> Sam! <sighs> Sam! Ah, oh, Richard. Sorry, we, no, no. is the, is the no, no. intercom system not working? What's going on? No, no. <coughs> hey, hey, hey! <coughs> oh, well, <coughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I raised my voice. Um. Yes, our special guest has arrived. Great. Wheel him in uh, right over here, and we'll get to work on him. Straight away. Let's put him on this table here. He gestures at a long surgical steel table with chains and attachments for arms and legs. Starkid is laying on that table, still unconscious, and he slowly gains consciousness. (sighs) Well, this is not the best hangover I've ever had. (sighs) Do you always have a funny phrase you say after you wake up I try I was told I wasn't very funny as a lawyer so I've been working on my my jokes and my gags but ah. Mm. Mm. Richard uh, pull the the thing yes please I'm getting real tired of people ah ah what ow what Ah. you see there's no room in this town for comedy Dark star, you know, and funny town. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, here's the thing. We, we've we never considered you an, an enemy. Isn't that right, Richard? Yes, yes, of course it is. He's not an enemy at all. Not at all. Yes, not at all. But you seem to be against our everybody's best interest. Or so we heard from our very good friend, the sheriff. I just can't let it stay this way. It isn't right, and you know it. I walked away that day with enough to fuel up my ship and leave. But if I had known... And so you did. If I had known what you were going to do, how far this was going to go... Richard, a little more stretchy, please. Ah! Mm. You can stretch all you want. You'll have to snap me in half to make these thoughts go away. Is... Th- Is that what you really want? Of course it's not what I really want. But... Then why would you do... Richard, 
Couldn't you please whip him? Ah! Thank you, sir. May I have another? Okay, go ahead. Ah! You do have a very curious way of communicating. <sighs> I'm really just buying time. Uh, Starkid looks out the window, the small window with bars on it, and sees the red side of Darla pivoting outside the window. He whistles. And Darla lights up the room. Oh, Mr. Kid, I wish we didn't have to do this. Don't <clears throat> move a muscle. Let me out. We've got two guns trained on you right now. Come on, let me out. <clears throat> Darla tries to shoot at them, and <coughs> nothing happens. Mr. Kid, do you really thought we wouldn't try to disable your guns remotely? Do you take us for amateurs? Not amateurs, you just forget it's a really big ship. <whistles> Darla crashes into the side of the wall, breaking it into pieces. <laughs> the, the table, the table brothers falls lay over. on the floor unconscious. <sighs> Who's unconscious? <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> the Bibbidi brothers <laughs> oh, okay. lay on the ground unconscious. Kid, are you doing all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just, uh, I'm just gonna get out of these restraints. Ah, okay. Starkid grabs the two of them by the back of their neck and drags them into his ship, where he puts them both in restraints. <clears throat> All right, Darla, it's time to go down to that the bottom of that mine shaft. We gotta free those, free, free those little guys now. It's time to put an end to Dark Star. As you say, sir. Shh. We cut to the bottom of the mine where we come to a large open space in which run around lots of cute puppies. We have arrived. Thanks, Darla. Darla opens the shuttle door. All right. Okay, puppies. It's been a long time since I've uh, since I've left you, and I can't I can't let this go on anymore. Why did you leave us? Cause I was confused. They offered me money. I thought they wanted to protect you. You 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 we can't do this anymore. Your days of mining for the Axelron Company are over. Stark had reached Thank over you very much, and kid. presses a Thank big you very red much. button. The door opens. You're free now. Go. Get out of here. The puppies run to their freedom. And a great, a, an amazingly large group of people arrive. They are cheering for Star Kid. They say, Star Kid. Star Kid. Stop. Mario. Stop. I'm not, a, I'm not the hero here. Stop it. Star Kid stands and waves his arm, telling trying to get them to stop, but he can't get them to stop. They pick him up. They carry him. They're carrying him to the t center of the town. We love you. We love you. We love you. Now we cut to the special dungeon. Sam is looking at Star Kid. He's convulsing. He's having a nightmare. Sam, I believe the serum is taking effect. Yes, Charles. It does. It does seem to uh, to be playing out exactly what he was hoping to get here to do. I I really must congratulate you on this on this uh, this series. You've really got away with the the medical devices. I must say. Well, I did, but he still hasn't confessed what we need to know. We, what is it that we need him to say exactly? Maybe we can. Plant we need that. to know exactly where he planted the bomb. Yes. If we don't know where the bomb is. Things could get messy very quickly. Um, we will lose everything we have. Well, uh, let me. I'll try whispering in his ear. Where's the bomb? Star Kid is left in, in the air by a crowd of people cheering for him. We love you. We love you. We love you. Where's the bomb? We love you. We love you. <sighs> Um, 
Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A very beautiful woman comes out of a cl crowd and says, Oh, Star Kid, we would really, really, I really want to spend the whole night with you. Only if you told me where the bomb is. Star Kid narrows his eyes. What, what's going? What's going on, kid? He reaches forward and punches her in the face. The sound of glass shattering inundates the whole town. He's waking up? How is he waking up? Star Kid rides on the table. Ugh. He gets one arm free and reaches up and grabs Charles by the throat. <gasps> uh, you leave my brother alone. Well, you have two options. You're going to get me out of these restraints. Uh, but then Star Kid passes back out from the serum. Star Kid wakes up in the middle of a field full <sighs> of sunflowers. This is either a dream or not. Starkid, it's me, Darla. Hi, Darla. Can you hear me? Yes, I think I can, Darla. You must wake up. Starkid punches himself in the face. Ugh. He wakes up in the middle of the ocean, floating on a raft. God, no! Starkid punches himself in the face twice. He wakes up standing on the surface of the sun, surrounded by stars. Oh, God. Uh, if it's a dream, I should be able to... He imagines and conjures a huge gun. Then he points down at the sun and fires it to destroy the sun. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the dungeon, he's, he's destroying every single dream. We're preparing for him very, very quickly. What are we going to do? We, um, we need to, we, uh, uh, we, we need to, I don't know. We need, we, give him more. Put more of the serum <laughs> in him. I know, I know, I know, I know. S special vial. Inject him with this. Okay, here. Uh. What do you think Star Kid wakes up in his in the house where he grew up. His parents are standing in front of him. He's finally happy again. Uh, uh, Billy, Billy, is that you? Yeah, it's me, Mom. Uh, my little boy, you're back. Ah, uh, uh, Zachary, Zachary, please come, come here. Our boy is back. Big brother Bobby! Hi, Bobby! You're here! Bobby! Oh, we've, we've missed, missed you so much! We've missed you so much! Me, your bro your father, your little brother. Please, never leave us again. I miss you too. But this... This isn't true. And I care about the truth. But the accident wasn't your fault, Billy. Please, stay with us. Mom, you know it was my fault, and you told me right up until the day you died. He punches her in the face. <laughs> he wakes up ah. in the dungeon, this time for real. All right, Bippity Brothers, this is over. You're going to let the puppies go, or I blow up the bomb. Mr. Kid, we don't want to deactivate the bomb. Can I punch you in the face? <laughs> no need for that. We want to know where the bomb is because we want to activate it. We want to blow up this whole town. I don't... Well, I, uh, that's the, see, my goal is free the puppies. Town, I don't... They, they, they should all live. You just can't mine with puppies anymore, Bippity Brothers. <laughs> mine with pup? <laughs> Charles, did you hear what he said? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks we're mining with puppies. As I know, Zab. It's just... <laughs> <laughs>
you, 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 you fool. You have no idea what's going on. Why, why don't you actually tell him, Sam, what's going on? <laughs> Mr. Kid. Yeah? Those weren't puppies. I mean, they weren't canine puppies. They weren't canine puppies. Of course. Yes. I should have known. Ah. They were infant lawmakers. We're bringing back law into the universe. And we need to blow up this ta- blow out this town because they are the only people that know what's really about this. I don't I don't think you've picked the right side, but I guess it's not my my job to say. I'll set the bomb. All right, it's already set. I'll activate it. I'm just going to take off on Darla. He whistles. Darla crashes through the window. Oh, good thing we have a large window in our dungeon. Well, if there wasn't a window, she would have come through anyway. Anyway, you're both despicable, but it's not my place. So, well, we're we're giving you a job again. What's the job? With law back, we're gonna need more lawyers. Starkid looks at them both and says, "The law is not my home anymore." He climbs up into Darla, flies away into the horizon. As he flies into the horizon, he presses a button, and the town. Explodes. Was that the last thing we'll hear about the Bibbidi Brothers? Will Star Kid find his true home? Will we know what happened to the lawless universe and the newly appointed lawmakers? And will we find out why Star Kid punched his mother in the face? Find out. Maybe next time. Maybe next time at the adventures of <laughs> Mr. Kid and the Bibbidi Brothers. Star, no, Kid, what do we call it? I forget already. Star Puppies. Star Puppies. Star Kid and the Bibbidi Brothers. Like the puppies, like the pu- star puppies, but the puppies are law. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that was Star Puppies. Thank you all. Thank you, Woo! Caesar. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to take a little that short break, and then we're going to chat a bit about the sci-fi western genre and why it inspired us today and how and how what we, we did and what we did so um yeah stay tuned for more see um, you next time i mean see you later see you in just a <laughs> second <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun, Caesar. That was that it was, was wild. Cool. It took it took an unexpected turn, but I it took a couple of unexpected. I'm turns. sorry. I, I threw I, I I could see it in your face. I threw a curveball at you. You jerk. <laughs> I mean, but okay, it fit. It just took me a second because, like, um, I don't know. I have this I have this immediate reaction when everybody whenever somebody makes something into a dream that I just go like, ugh, like <laughs> no, like because it it invalidates. I usually have the happening. same reaction, but it's. Only if that's the conclusion. Oh, it was all a dream. Right. And so but we if, didn't, if I, you use it as a device, I, I, I give myself a pass. <laughs> well, I, yeah, we found a way to use it as a device. But, like, but, and that's what's good about it. And, and the thing is, it sort of fits in the, I don't know, like, the sort of, because the sci-fi western is a place where, like, the body is augmented and the, the powers that people have are always, I don't know, they're, like, they're quasi-mystical. I would say they replace the western yeah. genre of, like, the, the mountain medicine man who could do give you visions and stuff. The yeah, medicine, all that ra- racist shit. Yes, all the racist, all the racist things. Um, but it's replaced in the sci-fi western by sort of like a technological capacity. Yeah, the the, the, the the shaman is the new, it's like a tech lord. <laughs> exactly. And to be fair it. to us, we did set up that they had body augmenting tech, right? They had health pill- yeah. and pills and like so... So like it was in a certain sense paying off this thing that we knew that these these two brothers have 
like part of their character is that they are like interfacing with the body in a different way, you know? So we, it, it was yeah. justified. We found a way to justify it, which is what was fun about it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these guys have, like, so, like, peels and stuff. I was so mad. I was looking at you like, no. You took away my victory. No, I didn't even want the victory. I was trying to stop the victory, but, like, yeah. <laughs> I was so mad. That stopped the victory. It did. I mean, I, I introduced right. talking dogs. I thought you would have caught up that it was a dream. As one would in a dream, didn't even think about it. <laughs> Well, yeah, and like in a crowd coming out of nowhere, cheering. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, you're right. You were you were laying it on thick, and I wasn't realizing. So th thanks for thanks for making it very clear. <laughs> <laughs> Not clear enough. Cool. Uh, so what else? Um, what, the other elements of it that were that were great. I mean, I like that the that his ship was. I mean, so th there were two things that were unique to our hero, right? Like he was able to like. He was interested only in truth, right? And so he was able to, yeah. like, break through dream after dream Because after he was dream. a lawyer, apparently. <laughs> right, apparently. But, like, that yeah. connected to this, like, thing that he's like, it doesn't matter what, how nice this thing is to believe. I have yeah. to, you know, I have to find the truth or whatever. Yeah, well, we, we even managed to, to, to like, to, to sneak in a, an emotional moment. <laughs> yeah, we did! <laughs> Yeah, before he, I mean, before he punched his mom in the face. But what was, was the accident? Why was it his fault? We'll maybe we'll never know. But it, it or made maybe sense we'll to know me next time. In that moment, maybe we'll know next time. It made sense to me in that moment that the the hero is tortured by like a failure of his own, right? Mm. Like, and he, and his his inner self would try to say it wasn't your fault, but his thinking self knows that was my fault, whatever it was, right? Like the thing that happened was my fault. Um, and so it's it. I th I thought it was. It had all the elements of a really good, heroic backstory. You know. So yeah, that was cool. Well, I th I thought things were 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 going way too easy for the hero. True, you're right. You're right. It was just he was just marching in and making it happen. Yeah, like the you know the ship crashes in, just shoots the bad guys, and everything works out. Yeah. It had they. It, he had to fail there. He had to fail. No, you're you're totally right. And like I, yeah, yeah, you're right. It was it was too easy. And I think that's part of what is like diff it's difficult in improv to like p appropriately balance those stakes from mm. just like the hero's journey. Yeah, it like to to make sure that it's not too easy or that it's not you know that you don't just like stay in how hard it is because it's impossible. Yeah. You know, like improv would tend in either of those ways. But I think I think I think you I think you very nicely saved it to make it that he was like going through a trial, made it through the trial, yeah. and yeah, yeah, so that was that was fun. That was great. What? Tell me more about this idea of infant lawyers. What the? Heck? So so this final <laughs> this final step. He like think the hero thinks no, he's no, made it I all didn't the say way. Lawyers, I said lawmakers. Lawmakers, infant lawmakers. They were infant lawmakers. Uh, they were puppy politicians. I don't know. <laughs> I at that point I that's the, why the that's Bimini why the brothers hero, were trying to bring law back into the universe that was by the blowing up the town. Anyway, it, well, it doesn't matter. The, the blowing up the town was the cover up. I see. Okay, so that all made sense in your mind. In my mind, the only option was for the hero to be like, "I didn't understand this at all. I'm getting out of here." Right? Like, <laughs> well, but we finished with an explosion, so that's fine. Yeah, blowing up in the distance. Very cool. So, what was your favorite? What was your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part, I mean, I, I really enjoyed several of the interactions with the, the first interaction with the sheriff I really liked, like you looking for the key, finding the key, you like setting up the, the like how scary this mm. person is. I liked the character of the sheriff, like him working for the mining company. And then, yeah. um, I, I enjoyed also the dynamic between the brothers. Like I the felt that proper outlaws, the proper outlaws, right? Because, well, so there were a couple of things that were living in my mind that maybe weren't in yours, to just take a quick discursive thought about this. I wanted the brothers to, like, actually be secretly good guys in the beginning, mm. in that they were saving puppies from from something, right? Well, but they they want to bring law back. So they did. They ultimately, we, ultimately, we did guys. get there. We didn't, like, expound on it enough to make them, like... The, the, the thing is that if they were actually just, you know, trying to save puppies, that would be too obvious. You're right. 
I so sometimes it's the obvious thing, but like you're right, it might have been too too obvious. But yeah, I, I don't mm. know how because it's it's kind of a complicated genre to craft. And I honestly with with westerns, there's often a lot of like switch switch. Oh, you think it's this way? Oh, da 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 da. Right, like it cha- your perspective changes a lot, which is hard to pull off. So anyway, what what was what were your well, favorite we, moments? The favorite moments. I mean, usually my favorite mo- moments is, when, where, is where everything goes to hell. Yeah. So the, the trials. I like the trials. Like, where the is trials like, would it, great. F- Because for me, at least, well, with the story, like, when, when the story clicks, yeah. it's like, oh, this is the, the, the special part. This is the special. This is what makes the story special, right? Yeah. Like, in, in Time Tapes, it was the first time you, we went back to the past. In yeah. Border Crossing, was the first time uh, was Julian just killed the guy. <laughs> It's like, oh, okay, we found the, the, the special little nugget yeah. true. in the story. True, true, true. And there's yeah. where, you know, in the, in the trials, we discovered, like, okay, this is like, this is the, the, what kind of hero is Star Kid, right? It's like, he's the guy that's not going to stop fighting, doesn't matter, he's, you know, he's back with his family, hmm. he's happy, but he just wants to find the truth. So it's a, it was like a character moment, and I, yeah. I enjoyed that. No, it was, it was really, thank you for for making it happen despite my like you, you <laughs> audience you can't see it but i scowled i scowled real hard i was like <laughs> i had to push through i had no choice i know i i and i i i, I accepted it after my initial and then well, i but you know, that's kind of my style i like to throw is. curveballs at people no it's good it's really good caesar and i apologize for my immediate reaction but it, <laughs> it's it, right. it, worked, it worked out really well it was hilarious <laughs> Your friend was like, <laughs> I don't think it was quite that bad, but yeah, I was, I was confused and I was unhappy. But it we'll all came. We'll see it on the YouTube's. Out. We'll see it on the YouTube's. Yeah, everybody, we're on YouTube now. So for everyone to see how much. Yeah, so if you're listening to the podcast, me. you can find us on YouTube. It's right now. It's just an image of Caesar and I improvising. <laughs> we're gonna eventually try and have other things. There's, we've got grand, big plans. Maybe as big as that, that uh, dark. What's it called? Dark Star. Maybe as big as the development of as Dark, big Star. As Dark Star. Um, yeah, and we left a few stuff unexplored. So maybe if we if we want to go back to the same story, we could. Which is something that would be interesting, like uh, like going back as that doesn't happen in improv, right? You go back to a yeah, previous I mean, story. I I think if we if we settled into so we've got Star Kid. We know he has the ship Darla. Like we could say, like it's the adventures of that guy, or we could we could yeah. permutate on that and suggest it's like a different thing in the same universe, and like you know, and be be playing yeah. with that. So and we need to do another episode of time tapes. True. We have to. <laughs> we we need to continue that story. Yes, time tapes. What? No, we. I remember we said with time tapes. It's a we, case if a case of cassettes. Time tapes. Right. We you no. Know, yeah, time tape. A case, of, a case of cassettes or whatever. But we had like not time. It was like a. I can't remember warp discs. We we had like a the sequel was going to be like a different kind of instead of a tape it was something else. I can't remember what we said. It could be a VHS. Yes, that's what it was. We said the VHS, the uh, yes. yeah the very yes. What's the what's the we'll come up with the the voracious VHS. The we'll alliteration. Come up with the alliteration. Yeah. Uh, velocity VHS. Velocity VHS. <laughs> No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's in development, everybody. We've been working on it for a long time. We're very excited to get that out for you. Yes. Uh, we, you know. we just came up with a title. Uh, so, yeah, very excited. We're very excited. So what's uh, – okay, we did the, the your favorite part. What's the thing that you didn't like so much? The things that I didn't like so much? Um, I felt like we we failed to really tie back in uh, uh, Jeb and Jubadiah. Jeb and Jubadiah. The two Jebediah that we, and Gubadiah. Gobadiah, thank you. Yes, um, I don't. But I think I think it's fine. That was just like character establishment for. Well, usually in westerns, you, you sometimes you do that kind of like cold opening. Right? Yeah, you dispose of some bad guys. Yeah, true. Yes, to, I could to actually show... go back. I could. Mm-hmm. You know what I could do? What? I could put in a like a a bit of music or something after that that moment. With Jeb mm. and Jub as the way you know, like the way the opening sequence goes. Yeah, that's the opening, the introduction. Are you? We're introducing the the hero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll see. I don't have a ton of time, but I'll try. Cool. Yeah. So it was sort of like a cold open. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Um. And so you, we're opening the, the a town. This guy has no fuel. These guys make fun of him. He takes no shit. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. 
And there's there like were... the comedy part. Oh, Darla, you didn't have to kill them. Oh, yeah. ha, ha, ha. murder. Yeah. Murder. <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> thing. Um, other things I didn't like. The other thing that I was, I was, I'm sorry that I did it. Because I was too attached to my idea. When the guy came over the, he, like the guy in the, the miner or whatever, asking for the yeah. foreman. I was too attached to that being a disguise for Starkid to get close to them or whatever. Okay. Which you shot me, and I did the, like, I haven't been shot thing. Like, you know, like that, <laughs> like, that, 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 it's a bad move generally to, like, take what someone else did I and know. cancel it. So but I'm it's sorry all right. about that. I apologize for canceling. <laughs> well, it's okay, because it was the ending, the end of the, the scene. Yeah. Now, if it was, like, the beginning of the scene... Right. That would have been more troublesome. But we had time to explore the characters, to, you know, the 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 Bibbidi brothers. Yeah, that's a good so point. We that's had time to do that. That's a good point, that you can do that sort of move at the end of a scene, not at the beginning. Because at the beginning, yeah. it would just be like, ah. So it's, it's not a dick move. It's a cliffhanger. Right. <laughs> it's a cliffhanger. <laughs> cool. So what are, what, are your, what are the moments that you didn't like so much? Uh, we didn't have much energy at the beginning. Yeah, True. Um, but it's okay. It's a more chill episode. This one's a chill episode. Yeah. It's okay. Even, even though we tried to pick a frenetic genre. <laughs> we tried to pick we one. We did. <laughs> well, uh, not for this one, actually. Not for this oh, one. Oh, right. It's for right. the, the, we're, the, the, we're the, the following. Tons of energy ones. in the coming episodes. Yes. Or, or that's the plan. Uh, yeah, because we, we don't have too much energy at the beginning. That's a problem. <laughs> That, well, yeah, it's. I mean, it's hard. Online improv is. I mean, for everybody out there who's trying and listening, the the energy is a difficult challenge. If you have ideas for how to get energy online, um, yeah. And I don't mean electricity. I mean improv juices. Uh, like, es especially when it's just the two of us, it makes it harder. Yeah, for I, me although at least. I, to be honest, I love I love our I love doing two improv with you. Oh, no, I'm fun. not saying it's bad or I don't enjoy it. I'm just saying it's 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 tougher. There's a little bit less of the bouncing of ideas back and forth right yeah, yeah. maybe it's like maybe. when there's, there's more of a the three of us right it's it's like mm. uh like in wrestling right we, we tag in and then we, right. we, we, we we rush in there's somebody to save you when you don't have an idea like there were a couple of times that i was like i don't get what caesar just did there like i don't know where he's going but i had to do something <laughs> i was like i don't know what's happening uh which i should just enter the scene confused right like i instead of like being like yeah I'm confident, you know, like I should just like, so. Well, um, the problem is that you're playing the hero and you're supposed to be confident, right. especially in a, in a Western, right? He's the, the cool yeah. guy. Right. I, did I also like it. the fact that, Go on. well, I, I do like the fact that, oh yeah, like Star Kid, his, his reaction is always to point his guns at people. And that never worked. <laughs> Never worked. No, the only the only thing that worked was a his like his commitment to truth and Darla. <laughs> yeah, basically, and it's fine because it's a, you know the incompetent hero is a staple of this the uh, star western. No, it's, it's, what do you call it? Space western. Space western. What I wanted to what I also wanted to do is recommend to people who are listening uh, space westerns to check out, and yes, you have a great before one. Before we go, yeah. Oh, Cow Cowboy Bebop. If you yeah. if you wanna watch one space western. Cowboy Bebop. And then go on, because they're right. really good. Yeah, the Cowboy Cow Bebop. Mm, mwah. I agree. So I watched one episode of it that Caesar recommended to me, and I got to say, really good. Like, And it, what what it's very clear to me is that it very clearly inspired, almost in a certain, certain sense, I was like, wow, this image looks a lot like the images in Firefly, which is another one that I quite like as a space yeah. western. Oh, um, but, and the music. Mm, oh, so yeah, good. great. Wonderful music choices. Um, so... So Cowboy Bebop is great. If you haven't seen Firefly, go ahead and watch it. Try not to pay for it because Joss Whedon, it turns out, is an, is a jerk. So you know, steal it somewhere or something because uh, he's a bad guy. Should I, I don't know if, that he, out? if he if he gets any money out of uh, Firefly. Maybe not. The studio that produced it might. Yeah, maybe. But it's got great people and it's got Nathan Fillion in it playing the lead guy, and he's he's good. He, it's one of his the highlights of his career, I think. Um, which they he jokes about in other things. Um, that one ep that one season of that one show, I the know, highlight of I, his career. Which, as we talked about, is probably why it is venerated so much. Like, because it didn't have time to get bad. Like, the fact mm. that it was cut short is part of its charm. Part of why it works so well is that you watch it and you're like, oh, they could have gone. They could have. There are all these things that they didn't. 
all, all these they things about the characters the we don't brothers. know. Yeah, and therefore it gets to live in the imagination more than it gets to be seen. Therefore it's probably better. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Well, this has been the offer. I hope you had a fantastic time. We're going to try to work more with genres moving on. Yeah, more genres. More genres but coming in. Keep being original. Indeed. The stories are always original and the genres are just useful tools. So, just, yeah, you set, you set our tagline out. So, uh, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, we'll, we'll hear from us next week. Our next guest will be. Drum roll. Give me a drum roll. Browder! That's right, Browder's in the Browder, house. Browder, no last name. Yes. Yeah, well, I, do, does he go by his full name on our podcast? I don't know. I feel like he's huh? just like a one-name sort of guy on here. Thompson. I know, but... Uh, I'll garble that. I'll garble it so you don't know. But uh, <laughs> Are you going to bleep me? I'm going to bleep you. <laughs> I'll take that beep sound you just made, and I'll put it over. Give me <laughs> give me a long beep. Can you just make a beep sound for me? Come on, come on, come on. Great. That'll cover, up. That'll cover it up. Um, no, I, don't, I just don't know if he wants his full name on the podcast. Some people are weird about that. See if it goes around. True. True. I mean, no no one no one can remember my last name. It's like a thing. Did I say Even your last name right? Did I say it right? Gozurreta. 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 Yep. Okay. We really got to wrap this up. We're just rambling at this point. So check out Cowboy Bebop, Firefly, and, and our episodes coming next. Uh, there's lots of great things happening here on The Offer, and we're very excited to bring you a story. Yeah, that's it. This is going to be The Offer. See you next time. And if you want to know more, go to theoffercast.com. He made that website.